Hi, I'm Jack Betts. I'm a second year games development student and uh, this is the Games Development Lab. Games Development Lab is fully equipped with everything you're going to need, such as a high definition projector, HD TVs around the room, as well as Xbox 360s to work on. All the latest software is provided, such as Autodesk 2011 and Visual Studio 2010. So anything you need, it's here. It's also here five days a week. So if you need to do some work, as long as there's a spare chair, you can do the work. On screen is one of the projects I've recently done, which is a game engine in DirectX. Um, the software used was, as mentioned, Autodesk and Visual Studio, such as the rifle I made, as well as the landscape. The lecturers helped me along with it, and uh, I finally managed to hand it in and get a very good grade. I'm Ross Davis. I'm on third year's game development, and I'm going to talk to you about a project that I've been doing for one of my modules in third year which is a 3D scene in DirectX using shader languages. So what you do for this coursework is basically elaborate upon something you've done in second year. In second year, we done a, two, a 3D scene using OpenGL that used the fixed function pipeline. Um, you taught all about that in second year. And it's very limited. It comes with a lot of limited functionality such as the lighting is very cubed and comes with a lot of flaws. So within the third year we develop a 3D scene and it's all done from the shader. So we get this nice shaded out approach and it looks very natural. So we take more control over the pipeline. Um, in second year you also learn how to make 2D scenes which I added upon some game logic into a playable game, which is more fun. And that comes from our first year knowledge that is to create a console-based application that does something graphically and fun. So how long did it actually take you to complete this project? Too long. Um, it took me about 14 solid days to make this because the coursework requirement requires some of the work done in the vertex shader and fragment shader as I decided to do it all from the vertex and fragment shader which meant I give myself quite a bit more work in order to get a more impressive scene like uh, you get the grass moving which is all done from the pipeline so that's all done on the graphics cards so it doesn't infringe upon the CPU which in modern games is a tactic that's always used. You always have to get as much of the process and into the GPU from the CPU as possible. So how much of this were you actually taught and how much did you have to find out for yourself? A lot of it was taught. We get taught uh, basics of everything. Like we were taught how to render basic grass with no movement and um, that was basically it. It was pointing towards the camera from the CPU which obviously defeats the point of the more modern techniques, which is to do it all in the CPU. And if I actually go above it, it shows the effect falling over because you wouldn't be able to do that in a proper game where there's one quad pointing towards you. And that saves a lot of CPU efficiency because it's traditionally done was six quads drawn and it appear like as if they were looking at you but was wasting a lot of processor time and rendering time. How much help did you get from the lecturers with this? A lot of help. Um, <laughs> one day when I was stuck on my glow effect, which you can see on the tank, the tank is glowing in the scene, the lecturer who clocked off at five stayed till eight o'clock to help me out of his own free time and didn't even get paid for that time. So. The lecturers are brilliant on this course. I've always found them incredibly helpful if I ever come into any trouble. So how did you find the first year? The first year, um, I was very interested in programming before I came to first year and also the maths. So the first year was a bit slow for me. Um, you learn all the basic techniques, which brings me into this project where all the work we do is console based so the old style type things in and you um, into a console with no real graphical ability and it's fun because you learn loads of new little 
techniques that you wouldn't have thought of before, but you just can't wait to go into second year where we uh, develop our 2D scenes and start to add the graphics to the games. So tell me about the computers you have access to. Well, first of all, we have quad core i7s by Intel, which is the top notch of the processors. Then you have eight gigs of DDR3 RAM, which, as far as I know, comes at 1,600 megahertz, which is the fastest you can get for DDR3 at the moment for these ones. We have Windows 7 64-bit, which allows us a lot of power to use the full potential of the RAM. And then we have our graphics card, which is NVIDIA GeForce GTX 285, which is not the newest one, but it's one of the most powerful cards on two series. And how does this help you do your work? It helps a lot because we have to do 3D models and graphics, and the CPUs can only do that. Therefore, the GPU power does come a lot handy, makes the work much, much faster, like the rendering, the modeling, it helps a lot. Does it only help you with 3D modeling, or does it help you with other aspects of work? It does help with modeling, because that's the most GPU-intensive work. For the processing, it does help to open up faster, but basically it's more of the rendering, like DirectX or OpenGL, that helps a lot.